Cooler Master had kind of a rough week with us last week. The Q500L, uh, as it turns out, we didn't do this math until today, but the Q500L didn't fare well in testing at all. In fact, it was quite bad. It was one of the worst cases we've ever tested thermally. And we did some math on it, and the amount of hole to steel ratio here is it's about 15.6% hole, with the remaining 80 plus percent being steel. So that's why it performed poorly, and we'll have more on this soon where I'm gonna cut a hole in the case and fix it. But the good news is Cooler Master does have something that is more whole than it is steel, and it's this thing. So this is the NR600. Today we're reviewing this one. It's a much more positive outlook than the Q500L, and the case has some genuinely interesting points to it, and it is about 70 bucks, so pretty competitive price point as well. Before that, this video is brought to you by Deepcool's Captain 240 Pro Closed Loop Liquid Cooler. The new Captain 240 Pro comes with RGB illuminated fans and a pump, easily synchronized to each other for color matching in your system. The Captain 240 Pro radiator also uses a unique elastic pressure relief bladder in the water tank as a leak prevention mechanism. It expands and contracts based upon liquid temperature to counteract AIO leak concerns. The cooler is available now and you can learn more at the link in the description below. Cooler Masters NR600 is something that we saw at CES and we saw it early enough that we were able to make uh, some suggestions. So Cooler Master did end up, it originally had a potential of one fan at the show. They ended up going with two. So the second fan is located in the center here. We've done tests with this thing with the front panel removed. We did tests with an extra fan. We did new standardized tests that we'll be publishing separately. And then we did our normal standardized tests. And the biggest thing here is going to be how it performs when you buy just one extra fan. Because at $70, this is very competitive. And you have the budget to maybe throw another 10 bucks at an additional 120 millimeter fan for the front. And then you have something that's got this ultra fine mesh. This is a steel panel. Like it's, it's part of the case structure rather than a dust filter. And uh, this is one of the more elegant approaches to doing a mesh front without also doubling down on a filter because then you end up with obstructions. Like if you did something like that, now you have potentially the hole lining up with the steel on the other panel, that would be a problem. So very interesting case. It is priced around where we would like to see the RL06, but it's just not. That case is in the 80s to 90s these days. It's also seemingly uh, low inventory. The Meshify C, the Meshify S2 are kind of, well, the C more so is a competitor directly to this case. And it's also got some NZXT design elements to it as well. So let's get through Patrick's build notes, the thermal section, and then discuss whether or not the Cooler Master NR600 is worth 70 bucks. At first glance, the Cooler Master Master Box NR600 Master Product Master bears a strong resemblance to the NZXT H500, mostly thanks to the partial glass panel that cuts off at the level of the power supply shroud, but also the flat, unadorned exterior. Cooler Master has gone increasingly minimalist with its branding, which is limited now to a logo-shaped power button and an embossed hexagon on the side of the power supply shroud. We went so far as to put the NR600 side by side with the H500 for comparison, but the glass panels are, in fact, slightly different sizes. A glance might not make it clear how much more ventilated the NR600 is than the H500, though. The, the H500 by NZXT, just to be clear, because Cooler Master also makes one of those. The NR600's front is covered with a fine mesh that acts as both a filter and a front panel, hopefully avoiding the thermal problems that some cases introduce by backing mesh with additional layers of filtration. And this is something we'll test momentarily and demonstrate the thermal differences. Dust will gather on the outside and some inevitably gets through, but it's easy to wipe down and the front panel comes off easily. We prefer this solution and find Cooler Master's implementation of the fine material to be of excellent quality. By opting out of a filter, Cooler Master has also made it possible to mount fans on the outside of the chassis, nearly flush with the panel, but still inside of the panel, mind you. So this should draw more air in from the outside of the case instead of just recirculating it inside where sometimes you end up with a slight gap between the panel and the fan because of where the chassis positions the fan and then you could actually recirculate as we saw with the Bit Phoenix Enso. This is another good move by Cooler Master and a stark departure from the disappointment that was the Q500L. The mounts inside the front panel have three perfectly sized ducts for the 120mm fans, but not so for 140mm ones. 
Two 140mm fans are tactically supported, but they really don't line up well with the cutout, and the mounting holes are at the bottom of the panel rather than the top, so there's no way to point a 140mm intake fan directly back towards the CPU cooler. There are also just a couple of mounting holes that are too small for fan screws, although they would fit radiator screws, which is mildly bothersome and sort of annoying. Cooler Master also includes two 120mm fans in the case, one intake and one exhaust, which is, much like the Meshify C, enough for the case to function but not really excel. It's difficult to install fans of any size in the bottommost slot because of the hard drive cage, which is riveted in place and prevents most screwdrivers from fitting under the power splice route. A removable fan or radiator bracket would solve this completely, but also adds a production cost. A right angle driver makes this much easier. Opening the case for the first time revealed two minor fit and finish issues. First, there was the tip of a broken off rivet, nothing structural, loose in the bottom of the case, and second, the glass panel doesn't slide all the way forward to fit flush against the front panel. The glass is supposed to be slotted in, slid forward, and screwed into place, but since it can't slide forward that last millimeter or so, the metal tabs at the rear of our case were bent slightly when the thumb screws were tightened down at the factory level. This doesn't affect function, but it is visible from the outside of the system. The other side of the case uses an old school steel panel, straightforward, with tabs that hook into the case. But it's thick enough and the cable management space is wide enough that there isn't much danger of the panel bowing out when it's being put back on. And this is usually the biggest annoyance with that style of panel. The cable cutouts on the motherboard edge, the clearance for cables, and the tie points are well placed for velcro straps to make cable management pretty good overall in this case. The riveted hard drive cage is the only roadblock since it makes it more difficult for users to repurpose that space for storing power cables or just accessing that lower fan chamber. The top of the case has a vent roughly 30 centimeters long or large enough to fit two 140mm fans. Its magnetic filter is shipped stowed inside of the side panel, which is a great strategy to keep us from using it with our stock test and potentially hurting the thermals. The filter for the power supply vent on the bottom of the case is just a square of mesh that fits into the cutouts on the case. It pops out easily and it's sort of annoying to put back in, but it's also standard for this price range and not something we haven't seen before. Front I.O. is limited to two USB ports and one four pole or combined in and out audio jack. Cooler Master advertises the combined jack as a feature, but plenty of headset users have split mic and headphone cables that put out to two separate 3.5 millimeter jacks, so you'd have to use the motherboard there. It's just as likely to be a limitation as it is to be a feature. Whether it's a benefit or a drawback comes down to what the user already owns, so we'll leave that there. On the other hand, Cooler Master may have made up for this in the compatibility department by selling a version of the case with a five and a quarter bay. We rarely bother to comment on support for optical drives at this point, but it's something that other mesh fronted cases like the Mesh 5C, the Redline 06, or the various other Cooler Master H500 variants all shy away from. The ODD model of the case is a separate SKU and doesn't seem to be on sale just yet at time of writing, but we're happy to see that the market is being met for those who still use optical drives and also want a mesh case because that's a difficult market to fill right now. Moving into the thermal section, we are experimenting with two new standard tests. We have one that's noise normalized thermals and then one that's standardized fan placement. We've tried noise normalized thermal tests in the past, but we've now settled on 36 dBA using the stock case fans as our goal. We've begun building this content and have included the NR600 in the charts, but we're not ready to publish just yet. We'll do the normal review thermals in this content and we'll have a different content piece as we add more cases for the noise normalized and the fan normalized tests because we, we do need to send more cases through that channel first. We'll start the CPU torture thermals with just the NR600, then we'll add the comparative chart versus other cases. With the Cooler Master NR600 under full stock conditions, we measured CPU thermals at 55.6 degrees delta T over ambient when running the torture workload, with idle at about 4.8 degrees Celsius. Simply adding a knock to a 1500 RPM 120mm fan to the front dropped CPU thermals to 47 degrees over ambient, a reduction of 8.5 degrees. If you're buying this case, one of the best things you can do is purchase one 120mm fan. They're not even that expensive. The improvement is because we've now created a straight front-to-back airflow path for the CPU tower cooler, benefiting our configuration greatly. 
That doesn't mean the case is bad in its stock configuration. It's actually, it's specifically not bad overall, but it does suggest that there's a lot to be gained from adding a single fan. This is great news, actually, because it means that Cooler Master's front mesh design is sufficiently constructed such that fan configuration changes are meaningful and have significant impact to thermals. Removing the front panel entirely has functionally the same effect on thermals as adding a fan, which is because we've now opened up the air to the CPU tower cooler fan to directly intake without obstructions or pressure inhibitors. Adding a fan and removing the panel are nearly synonymous, which indicates minimal obstruction to airflow with the panel design. Replacing the fans with two 140mm fans in the front yielded worse performance for the CPU than just adding one 120, and that's because of the awkward poor fitment of 140 fans in this case, which are one, partially obstructed, and two, don't line up perfectly with the CPU. We really wouldn't recommend going with them and instead would push you toward a 120. Here's the comparative chart. 55.5 degrees Celsius CPU delta T over ambient is average on this chart, just a little warmer than the Meshify C stock. It's in the same boat as Fractal's Meshify. It has great cooling potential, but is short on fans when the NR600 is left stock. Adding a single fan to the NR600 achieves a 47.1 degree result, which makes the NR600 much more competitive, and puts it on the level of the long praised Silverstone RL06, another mesh fronted case that ships with a full complement of four 120mm fans. There's always a pick two balance to be struck between case price, number of fans, and quality of fans, but both Cooler Master and Fractal prioritized price. The user is left, and encouraged, to purchase at least one extra fan or maybe shove a CLC into the case somewhere. GPU torture thermals are next, starting again with a limited chart. The baseline torture GPU temperature with the stock case configuration was 54.3 degrees Celsius over ambient, which dropped to 50.6 degrees with the front panel removed. This lack of reduction versus the CPU results is because the single intake fan is aimed more toward the bottom of the case, benefiting the GPU and the stock configuration, and so it had less to gain. This is probably best, as the GPU is more thermally sensitive and will boost pursuant to the core temperatures, so we think that, for the most part, Cooler Master chose the right way to use just two fans. Adding a single front intake does little for the GPU, and this is unsurprising as we pointed it straight toward the CPU cooler. We measured a one degree reduction, which is within our error margins. We do not have test resolution to state if this is a meaningful change or just statistical variance. Swapping to the lopsided dual 140 configuration further reduced thermals for the GPU, bringing us down to 49.9 degrees in this setup because the top doesn't accommodate a 140 properly in favor of an optical drive support option, the GPU receives most of the air and so is benefited. Here's the comparative chart. A baseline of 54.3 degrees is on the warm side, judged against our other cases, but is still well under control. To be fair, the Meshify C averaged 57.8 degrees delta T over ambient in this test, with a full set of four 120 motor fans, three intake, one exhaust in this case, we'd probably see scores comparable to the RL06 across the board. One of the advantages of mesh fronted cases like this is that adding more fans will continue to improve performance. Running the Firestrike Extreme test on loop averaged 56 degrees over ambient for GPU thermals, a couple of degrees higher than the torture test. This places it in the middle of the chart again, but two degrees below the stock Meshify S2 and four degrees below the stock Meshify C. We're emphasizing stock because these cases would perform better with additional fans if they were purchased. But that's also true for the NR600, which we ran stock in this test as well. Stock intake fans that have to supply air to both the CPU and GPU are never a great compromise, but with airflow biased towards the GPU, the NR600 manages to pull through reasonably well in this test. The Blender CPU render averaged 38 degrees over ambient for the CPU, the only component stressed here, which is a full two degrees below the stock measure of IC. It's comparable to the NZXT H500 and within margin of error of that case, which is practically the same thing, but with a sealed off front panel. Mesh is great, but without an extra fan or two to take advantage of it, no more air will come in than it would through a more restricted case. At least not much more, depending on the pressure setup. And ZXT also leans on leveraging a negative pressure setup in their H500, so air is pulled through nearly every hole in the case, including unused PCIe slots and perforations in the paneling. With the Blender GPU render, GPU temperature averaged 26.8 degrees over ambient for the NR600. That's again significantly better than the Meshify C, but just about tied with the H500 from NZXT, as well as the Lianli O11 Air. Those are both fine cases, although the Air is way better without its filter, but again, the NR600 could do better with some additional fans as seen in the torture tests. The stock fan does a decent job of moving cool air in along the surface of the PSU shroud, but it doesn't force a wall of air through 
like the RL06 does. Noise testing is up last. 38.7 dBA is almost precisely the same as we measured with the stock mesh of IC, which makes sense. The open mesh front doesn't do much to muffle noise, but the two stock fans also don't generate much to begin with. This case is reasonable overall. Just know that adding more fans will affect the noise given the front panel design. That said, we've previously demonstrated in other content with the RL06 with a uh, versus a be quiet case that mesh cases can be better tuned acoustically by simply dropping fan RPM, which is a luxury not afforded by most of these silence focused cases as they need higher static pressure to pass all the obstructions that are in the case. The NR600 is actually a pretty solid budget case. We liked it overall, and it's one of the cases in this price point that we would be completely fine with recommending. So good news there. It is a budget case though, and so buyers should be aware that the two 1200 RPM fans that come with it aren't particularly strong. They're fine, they do the job, but if you can justify another 10 to $14 to buy an extra fan, we would strongly recommend it and then drop the 120 millimeter extra fan right there in the front probably leave this dust filter off because uh, they shipped ours with it off stock, which is hopefully how it ships in the real world. Uh, because if, it, if it's not on their stock, then we don't test it stock. But you should take this off if you don't have anything on the top for intake because filtering dust on an exhaust doesn't make any sense. But yeah, if you do that, if you add a 120 fan, you actually have one of the best performing cases for a configuration similar to ours, which is a pretty, a uh, fairly standard configuration, especially for someone building with a budget that would accommodate this $70 case. And uh, overall, the build quality is acceptable. It's, it's really not the best we've ever seen, but it's completely fine for the price point. The cooling is good-ish stock to exceptional when you start adding fans to it. And uh, yeah, we, we think it's fine. So this thing, we did have some complaints. Those are in this review, but uh, the drive sleds are not present. You end up with a hard drive cage that's riveted in place. We found that very annoying because to use this lower bay, you need basically a right angle driver or you have to really screw around with the, well, screw around with the screwdriver for a long time to get through the riveted hard drive cage, which is very annoying. And uh, I had a couple of other elements to it as well that Patrick complained about in the build notes. If you didn't watch that, you should go check it out in the earlier part of this video. So some caveats overall, but for a $70 case, it's fair, it's acceptable. And uh, this is one of the simplest enclosures you could manufacture. It's, it's very similar to every other $70 mid tower, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The S340 is mostly dead at this point. It's been replaced by the H500 by NZXT. That's a good competitor to look into. The RL06 is still a good competitor to look into. Cooler Master's own H500 at about $30 more is another good solution to look into. And the Fractal Mesh of IC, but you should add fans to that, is another competitor. So that's kind of your list of competition if you want to do some research on each of those. And uh, otherwise, this is fine. It's actually, it's actually pretty good. It's much better than this thing, which is bad, and you shouldn't buy it. That's the Q500L. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly. Our mod mats are coming back in stock uh, in the next, about this week, probably hopefully the end of this week, and they'll ship out immediately. And then this shirt, the Graph logo shirt, has been restocked freshly as well. We're going to go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us there and join our Discord. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.